Hey guys, it's Jeanette. I hope you're all doing well. I'm super excited about this video. This is my first collab video of 2018 and I'm announcing that Mr. Nurse Bass will be creating a dad's point of view of tips, experiences, what to expect when returning back to work, and how to balance uh, work life, uh, family life, new baby, career, education, etc. So without further ado, go ahead and check out the links and information down below. You'll see all of Nurses Bass uh, social media as well as the video that's connected to this video. All right, let's get started. So first, congratulations to Nurse Bass and Ashley, his wife. Braxton is adorable, and I know that he was the best person that can provide the male's point of view um, in regards to this topic. Um, as for me and my husband, our daughter is now 14 months old, so I've gone through the whole going back to work when I um, was off from maternity leave for about three months, and then... Um, just, you know, finishing a degree, working, and now um, pursuing a higher degree. So, yeah, I hope that my tips will be helpful to you if you're considering starting a family, if you're um, newly pregnant or you're expecting soon and you still are either um, working in nursing or thinking about um, working in nursing while pregnant, etc., as well as all the new parents um, that are transitioning from staying home, caring for the baby, and now going back to work. So where I am in America, we only get maybe six to 12 weeks off from maternity leave. I wish that I either had saved up more PTO, was with the company longer, um, and could financially support us being um, home longer so I didn't have to return just after 12 weeks. So, so although at 12 weeks I had to go back to work, my husband um, was able to stay home and I think around that time we were also talking to uh, one of my cousins that was going to move in and help um, care for Sarai while I returned to work. So I was happy that I had family taking care of um, my baby. So that's the number one tip that I would give anyone. Make sure that you have um, trustworthy, reliable people that are caring for your child. If you don't find that piece of the right people, your mind will constantly um, go there. They're okay. Why aren't they uh, communicating what's going on? So do yourself a favor. Try to secure babysitting and even uh, back up babysitters in advance so you have that peace of mind that your baby is being well taken care of. So I will skip a couple months after I returned uh, to work to maybe when Sarai was about seven or eight months. We had to put her in daycare and that was another transition that I um, had to get used to. Now it was no longer uh, my husband or my family member. Now we were trusting um, a local daycare facility to take care of my seven, eight month old. And again, this is hard. My heart was breaking, but we had to do what we had to do. So we toured many different facilities and we got some recommendations from some of the uh, peers at my job and I liked the people, the facility was clean, they had a good um, reputation and they also had video access monitoring so if I am not there I can log on and view the room. So that was a huge selling point of whether I was going to bring my baby there and I'm glad I did but I will say when I got Got back to work, especially working in the intensive care unit, um, it's fast paced and I really didn't have much time to even log in um, and view. But the good thing is that um, my mom, my um, Sarai's other grandparents were able to also get the uh, login and they were able to watch her all day which also gave me some type of peace because my baby is being cared for. So one thing that I remember doing that kind of made things a little easier was to um, Try to call FaceTime during my either pumping breaks because I did breastfeed or during my lunch break. I wanted to see her and she would look at my face through the phone, the FaceTime, and that would really make my day and will help. I will say because I was working in the intensive care unit that things were busy. So my mind was constantly on my patients on what I had to do. If I did have a slower paced job, I could definitely see myself 
getting more emotional throughout the day. So when you get back to work, everyone's excited to see you and obviously they ask, oh, how's your baby doing? And this could definitely trigger you whether you're gonna get all emotional and cry. And I will admit there were moments that I may have had a really bad day leaving that morning. Um, and I would cry and you'll find the peers and um, the support that you can lean on when you're at work. And other nurses were pretty much talking about their experience when they came back to work and that they cried all day. So the support at work is is so valuable and so helpful when you're transitioning. So one tip I can give you guys is to stay in constant communication with your management team. Let them know how you're doing, whether it's during the pregnancy, if you need your schedule just to make some appointments, um, if you physically are getting to the point where you can't work, how can they work with your schedule? I think that is the biggest thing and the fact that I was in constant communication has helped um, us work together. They obviously know, you know you're trying to start a family, you're pregnant, and um, they want to support you. So the support, if you find a facility and wherever you're working at, a management team that is supportive of you, um, that is awesome. I know there are not too many um, employers or you may find yourself with certain management teams that are not as understanding and that really is difficult when we already are in a difficult um, position in terms of not having enough time off etc but I won't go down that. <laughs> so like I mentioned before um, the support is invaluable it's so helpful when you're transitioning back into working and um, I think it really helped me that I had certain people that I can go to chat to them about the baby, how I was feeling, maybe ask some questions, how did they um, get through this, um, and any other tips. And then just for a quick moment for all the ladies out there that are considering breastfeeding, um, definitely I guess let me explain to you how I got through it. So in the morning, I would actually pump while I was getting ready. So I would have a couple of bottles or ounces available for the baby. And then I would go to work, do my morning assessment, morning labs, go pump, come back to my afternoon uh, medication passes, etc. And then I'll take my lunch, pump, and then do my afternoon morning, uh, sorry, afternoon medications and tasks. And then... Um, maybe around four or five, I would pump again and then get ready for like the end of shift. So I really tried to get at least two uh, pumping sessions and that was really difficult. Um, talking to your uh, nurse buddies, your um, charge nurses, so they can help cover and watch the patients while you're off the unit um, was really helpful. And a lot of them are understanding. So again, communicate. So one thing I couldn't do without is coffee. I mean, <laughs> at that point, I was really trying to restrict the amount of caffeine I was drinking, especially when I was breastfeeding and all of that. But I needed to stay awake and alert. Do as I say, not as I do. I was not one of those moms that could really nap while the baby was napping. I just felt like I needed to use that time to do other things. <sighs> Sleep when the baby sleeps, and this goes for dads too, but I'm sure uh, Nurse Bass will have his tips for you. Um, but yes, if you can sleep when the baby sleeps, if you can set up a, a nighttime routine, and this didn't occur until Sarah was maybe seven months old when we started putting her to bed at 7.30 p.m. So she would now sleep from 7.30 p.m. to like 7 o'clock um, in the morning, may wake up once or twice just to you know get uh, more milk but that really helped because when I got home from work I would say good night I would have at least an hour or two to um, take care of myself do homework study eat dinner and you know I wasn't taking care of Sarai because right now she's sleeping and I had some me time where I was able to study take exams etc so that really changed the game for me in terms of how to manage school um, as well as working and even one-on-one -on -one time with my husband. So now more towards the physical aspect of transitioning or maybe working while you're pregnant. So take care of yourself, drink lots of water, know your restrictions, don't try to um, overexert yourself. Use your resources, delegate certain tasks, and really just um, speak for yourself. If you can't push this person down to CT by yourself, get some more help. And I did work to maybe 30, 
seven weeks when I was pregnant in the ICU and that was a lot a lot on the body so you don't want to overexert yourself and put yourself in the baby at risk so speak for yourself be an advocate for yourself for your baby and work with your team so you can get the tasks done and properly care for your patients if you don't know i am a type a personality and i have many dreams and many things that i want to get done and sometimes that can be very overwhelming so this tip is generally for anybody know your limits and know when it's time to either take a break or step back a little bit. So when I was um, home on maternity leave, I thought I was going to maybe take three classes for my BSN at that time and kind of get ahead and make up from lost time. So no, that did not work out. I was so sleep deprived and I'm happy that I wasn't enrolled in any courses because I probably would not have performed as well as I would have because I'm sleep deprived. It's just emotionally, I wasn't... Uh, balance and it was just difficult and I was learning how to be a new mom baby we were having issues breastfeeding etc um, so know your limits and it's okay to say no it's okay to step back it's okay to take some time planners off. and I love um, anything that will help me keep a deadline so I utilize that to stay on top of my homework assignments my work health stream module um, deadlines as well as any other activities that we had planned with friends family etc so staying organized because pregnancy brain is real and even after delivery my brain was a little um you know suspect so yes stay organized put everything in one place and that's the best way to communicate because sometimes I just I would totally forget things and I'm so glad that I resorted to my planners Another thing I wanted to talk about was the amount of guilt of either, you know, leaving the baby at home, leaving the baby with my husband, um, spending time doing homework, being at work. It's, it's a lot and I didn't expect to feel that, but I did. And it just took time for it to get better. I can't say that it's not there because now as I am pursuing my master's, I feel like I'm choosing career over my family and that's just, it's really hard. So I am still working on that, how to not feel so guilty. And I know that what I'm doing, what I'm sacrificing, um, the goals that I'm trying to achieve is to better help my family. So um, that's something that I want to let y'all know because I really, I did not think I would ever feel guilty for choosing to go to work and help other people. But I have a little baby girl that I should be home helping and you know it's a constant struggle um, in my mind and being able to talk to my spouse about it um, my close family and friends about it really helps and they help to lift you up so this big thing about having a support system is huge and I hope that you find, even if you don't have blood relatives near you, if you can find really close friends or anyone you can, you can confide in, um, having a support system is really, um, it helps. It really does. And for those that don't, consider being um, that type of support person for your peer or someone that may need that. Um, even having, even saying, if you're ever in a bind, and you need for me to pick up the baby or do anything, let me know. That right there gives me, has given me some amount of peace in moments where I feel like I had no other choice. So yeah, think about that. So that's about it. I'm wrapping up this video. I really wanted to provide you guys with both um, a male and female perspective on tips to help you find balance in your work, career, education, and family. It is difficult, so if you have any tips that has helped you transition or if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. I am actually really excited to read about what you um, have done, have found helpful, and then address some of your questions for those that are uh, planning to start a family or maybe you're having a little bit of difficulty balancing it. If there's any way I can help, I'm so glad um, to offer that. Again, don't forget to check out Nurse Pass's video. Um, I am super excited to go over there right now and go check it out. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and share the videos. Bye.